morning, y'all, from the garden. There was a heavy rain last night, didn't realize it. Slept through the whole thing. Um, doing a garden update because I haven't done one in a couple weeks. Um, as you can see, I have uh, started putting the edging around and putting the mulch down. This is going to take far more mulch than I anticipated, but in the long run, it will be done. Like I said, I put the cardboard down to suppress the grass underneath. Hopefully that will be enough. Um, you might get one or two spots where grass might start peeking through over time or weeds, probably not grass, most likely weeds. But um, for the most part, I have overlapped all the cardboard, so it should do the job. I am estimating about 62 bags of mulch in here. But like I said, it's a lot easier than the dealing with the crazy grass growing up around uh, the beds. But uh, anyways, updates. Uh, cherry tomatoes taking over this whole <laughs> flipping bed. Um, yeah, I think I like indeterminate varieties more than the uh, bushing determinate varieties. But they are setting fruit. These are the cherry tomatoes. So all this coming into this side is cherry. All that is cherry. All that is cherry. It, this guy in the middle particularly is spread out everywhere. Crazy. Um, this is the uh, replanted uh, caiman. It's growing slowly, but like I said, probably won't bear fruit. Um, flower sets all over the place. So, oh, there's a sucker. Take that out. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a, a matter of time. Fairly confident we'll have cherry tomatoes um, before the end of the growing season. Um, the other ones, not so sure. Hopefully they'll be um, mature enough to ripen on the vine and I will get some. But we'll see. Um, checking through all of these, I think I've only had uh, one or two that's actually set tomatoes. But, like I said, it, um, there's flowers everywhere. Hold on, I think I might see one. Boop, boop. Investigating. Ah, yes, there. Ah, this is broken. It just broke in my hand. Damn it. That's why you don't touch these things, Dink. Uh, yeah, so this would have been, uh, uh, the other one that I keep on killing the name. Mandre, Mandre, Madre. One less tomato for this plant. <laughs> but as you can see, yeah, uh, bushing out like crazy. Um, the peppers are soldiering on, even though they keep on being crowded out by the cherries. There's peppers down there. There's peppers over there. And there's peppers over here. So doing really strong. Cucumbers like a madman that one's probably going to be harvested this week but you can see all the cucumbers are all over the place there's one there if you come over here that's a good size one that one there's a curly q one down there don't know what buddy boy's doing but they are coming out fast and furious there's another one there there's tons of the female plants so tons down there again definitely going to do cucumbers again next year um, so impressed with um, their growth rate eggplant hopefully you'll have something uh, this season but still doing strong the oregano uh, I need to cut back those more of the pruning for today uh, oregano is doing fine. It's it like I said. It was really start to was slow to start, but really, really um, doing well. Really happy with those. The lettuce we've harvested this um, at least one or two times that I know about, and because we're doing it like you're just grabbing a bunch of leaves instead of like pulling up the whole plant or the whole head but the lettuce is doing great. The backup eggplants will probably do well as well. And the kale. 
they're actually growing. I can't believe this. We'll see how far they get. <laughs> um, from my understanding, they in my zone here, 6A in Chatham, they're saying that they can overwinter and still come back next year. I'll believe that when I see it. Uh, I don't know about that. But yeah, they, they decide to come up. The Ken Kong flopped over last night, but this is just because of the heavy rain that we had. Um, I'll try to straighten up as much as I can, but uh, they should be fine, I think. And also, <laughs> the, we've been harvesting these. We've had several meals from these already, and they're still doing well. Another uh, repeat um, harvest next year. Definitely going to be uh, doing it. Um, I've actually started already uh, planning for next year. I am definitely adding the two more beds. So where the Kangkong is, I'm going to plant perennials. So coneflowers, daisies, other stuff will always be growing in the center. In the back, uh, we're going to do a ras. We're going to do several raspberry bushes in another uh, four-foot uh, bed. Those are perennials. They'll come back every year, so we'll have fresh fruit. And the kangkong will probably grow in the up front where they will put the other one. So in total, we'll have nine beds uh, next year. Uh, okay, this the peas that I replanted doing well. The carrots doing fabulously. If you look closely, look, carrot. So keeping those in the ground for a little bit longer. These are the peppers. I'm pretty sure these are the, um, these are all hot peppers. And I'm pretty sure these are, because you can see the difference in leaves now. Pretty sure these are the West Indian variety. And which I'm going to start calling Scotch Bonnet. I don't know what was wrong with those people calling it West Indian. So these are probably Scotch Bonnet. And these ones are the Hungarian wax. Doing well. Potato plant. Taking off like crazy. Someone mentioned that you can use the leaves in some kind of soup for the potato plant. This is the sweet potato. Um, yeah. Not too surprised, but I know I haven't heard of it. Uh, I think in like uh, Asian cultures, uh, Filipino, uh, Chinese and stuff, they use them in that manner. I might need to redo some of the cardboard because <laughs> this got really hit hard with the uh, rain last night. Watermelon. Last time you saw this, it was vining, but not to this extent. It's crazy. My original plan <laughs> was to go in here and to trace back the vines and try to do only um, two fruit per vine, because I believe there's four uh, watermelon vines in here. Yeah. So when the garden planner said only plant two plants, they were really, really right. <laughs> because when I went in here, I could not trace back anything. It, it would probably take a day's worth of work to figure out what goes where. On the bonus, at last count, I had 14 watermelons in here developing the largest one if i can find it oh there he is you can see him oh he's a big one now look at this guy he's developing well and there's another small one there so just going throughout i did find uh, a lot so the two varieties that i used here are just, i'd say they're they're they do very well um especially if they taste good, I am most likely going to do watermelon again next year, just following the rules and doing two per bed. This is uh, a bit hectic. That's what happens when you get into panic planting. The season's running out and you haven't gotten stuff in the garden yet and then you just start planting whatever you can. It's awesome, the bounty, but it might be to its detriment later on, we'll see. And finally, the cantaloupe. Same thing, doing very well. I'm of the mind now that cantaloupe in particular sends out a ridiculous amount of the male flowers before the female ones come in. I went through this whole thing. I think there's five or six plants in here. Once again, I'm going to listen to the garden planner next year. Two plants, that's it. <laughs> Much easier to manage. Um, and I've only found two female 
uh, cantaloupes in here. So I'm still giving it time. I can't even find them anymore. I'm still giving it time uh, to um, see and see if it pushes out more of the female ones. But yeah, tons and tons of, of flowers. And I'm thinking the, the what the, the logic behind sending out so many male flowers ahead of time is when the female ones appear, they're almost guaranteed to be pollinated because there's so many of the male flowers that a bee is almost guaranteed to to land on one of the male flowers before it hits the female flowers and thus pollinating it. So <laughs> I have been noticing, oh, I can show you here, um, I think this is called rust spot. I have to look into how to treat that. Um, I pruned out a lot of the leaves in the center um, because a lot of them were like really uh, impacted by this. I've been spraying, uh, I tried the neem oil on it. Um, and it, cause I haven't actually seen pests. So I don't know if that's actually helping, but um, yeah, I have to investigate more on why that's happening. It doesn't seem to be impacting the plant itself too much because it's still producing like crazy with the flowers. But um, I want to try to keep it in track before it gets out of hand. And on the nistrum, I think it's the same thing that's going on here with these, with these leaves. I believe it's called rust spot because they look like rusty spots to me. So like I said, I have to uh, do some more uh, investigating. Um, the main reason I took out so many leaves in the center though was to expose the center because it was literally just a forest of leaves. Um, I'm sure the insects are getting in there somehow and getting to the flowers, but yeah, not sure exactly what was going on there. Anywho, um, not sure if I'm getting more mulch today because those bags are going to be ridiculously wet and heavy. Might wait a few days at the store to let them kind of drain out a bit. Um, but yeah, still continuing on. <coughs> You're, you can get the visual effect of what I was talking about now by putting in the edging and uh, filling it in with uh, the, the mulch. Anywho, that's my ramblings from the garden early morning. Hope you guys have an awesome day.